Good morning. Good morning, citizens of the world. This is EJ back once again with another narrated art time lapse video of uh, my artwork. And today we will be taking a look at one of my favorite artists, uh, Frank Rosetta's work, that dealer. Um, well, let me rephrase. Uh, I'm doing a study of one of Frank Frazetta's work, which is called Death Dealer. And uh, I love this piece. Uh, <laughs> this piece is just one of the most iconic images out there um, in the commercial art industry or like in the graphic illustration co uh, community, uh, especially in the comic book industry. Um, when you say Frank Frazetta's that dealer uh, painting, everyone would know instantly what it would look like. Um, it's not as uh, iconic when it comes to like the general population. Like I'm, I have a feeling that the general population isn't doesn't recognize the painting as much. But um, for the selective niche of uh, the comic book industry, this is a very immensely iconic image. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I decided to pick this as uh, one of my studies. So yeah. Um, but to quickly talk about Frank Frazetta, uh, Frank Frazetta was uh, predominantly a uh, comic book artist uh, or a cover artist. He did he does a lot of fantasy illustrations essentially. So. Um, he is known for doing uh, book covers and whatnot and comic book covers. Um, the first time I ran into him was with the Heavy Metal magazine. I was collecting the Heavy Metal magazine around uh, around 2000 to like 2003. I was um, buying that magazine um, intermittently. I didn't really have a subscription back then, but you know, every time I you know feel like buying. Um, uh, an issue of it, I would. So that was my first exposure to Frank Frazetta. I don't remember if any of the heavy metal uh, magazines I bought had Frank Frazetta as a cover, but I do know that he was heavily, heavily mentioned throughout uh, the magazines I bought. So I know that he is just one of those really amazing artists. Um, so yeah. Um, so that was my first exposure of Frank Frazetta, um, and I have a feeling that that was my first exposure of this image, that dealer. Um, when I ran into this image again in concept.org, um, in conceptart.org, they have a forum for master studies where, you know, um, they would post daily photos of, um, iconic pictures from from the past done by an artist from the past and you're supposed to do a study on it and whatnot and this is was one of the photos that got posted and when i looked at it i knew in instantly where i seen it from you know i, I didn't connect the name to frank Rosetta then at that time um, but i knew that i've i've ran into this image uh in heavy metal uh so yeah i, I know that you know, this was a very iconic image and whatnot. But yeah, uh, Frank Frazetta is an amazing artist to know. Uh, I was just reading his Wikipedia just not too long ago. Um, and I've read it before. I've read his Wikipedia uh, article before. But, you know, I was just kind of doing a refresher on my mind and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, he's just a very amazing artist that most people don't even really know about, you know. But when it comes to, you know, comic book artists and niche people, they're very, very aware of who Frazetta is. Um, so yeah, he's not like Thomas Kincaid, for example. You know, Thomas Kincaid is pretty well known even among the general population. So yeah, he's not like that, but he is known. So anyways going to my study um or talk to talk about the study that is going on right now um i wanted to say that this is probably one of the most depressing studies i have ever done um even though the end product looked good and looked great and whatnot 
this was actually kind of like depressing for me in a way because oh, the thing that depressed me about it is that I didn't paint the sword and the final image. I mean, if you saw, I always put the final image that I do at the very beginning. And so you should have seen how in that image at the very beginning, you'll notice that there's no sword. And if you look at that dealer on the left right now, you see that there's a sword. And I remember when I finally finished the painting and I posted it on conceptart.org, that was the first time I noticed it. You know, I like look at it and I put the two photos side by side and I'm like, what happened? Like, how did I miss a very vital detail? And then not too long after thinking that, go figure, someone mentioned it. Someone goes, what happened to the sword? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, you know, like I have a moment, a moment of freak out, you know, because I honestly, honestly do not understand how I could have spent five hours on this painting, studying this painting, looking at the nuances of, of the details that Frank Frazetta had put in. And somehow, for those five hours, I had missed that one important detail. The sword. <laughs> what happened to the sword? You know? And, you know, granted, I could have gone back and edited it and, you know, repainted it and whatnot. But at that point in time, when, when I posted it in conceptart.org and noticed that, you know, I, I couldn't edit it at that time, I think. And then finally, when someone mentioned it, I was just like, well, the gig is up. I can't edit it anymore because somebody already noticed it, you know. So I guess I did just decided to kept what I had done, you know, for posterity's sake because someone already mentioned it. But yeah, like, I mean, this this absolutely mystified me. Like, I was just so severely confused as to what happened. And the only thing that I could think of is that you know my initial mistake was at the blocking phase because at the blocking phase if you you know rewind back in time and look at this like a few minutes ago you'll see that i totally skipped out on blocking the sword out and since i forgot to block it it almost became like a tunnel vision you know where when i look at my image and i look back at Frazetta's image to you know help guide me when I'm painting it's almost like I didn't even recognize that the sword existed because when I was looking at my artwork well the sword did not exist in my artwork so it must not have existed in Frazetta's work too you know so I guess there was like a psychological disconnect in my head that happened that I didn't even recognize until the end um so yeah in a way I'm kind of glad that you know I kept this mistake in my painting because it's it's kind of like one of those things to like you know think about like what really did happen psychologically in my head you know I mean I honestly don't know <laughs> you know because when I paint you know I'm typically mute in my head or I typically have a million running thoughts in my head but it's all kind of like instinctive you know it's all kind of in the background so yeah <laughs> i i don't know what happened this i guess is the best way for me to put it um i want to say though that uh anthony jones um has a video about how to effectively do studying and i mentioned this in one of my videos before how we kind of have like almost like the same but not quite the same stance on how to do studies for him when you do studies, you're supposed to have this um, specific approach, you know, to why you're doing the studying. You know, don't just do a blind copy. Don't blindly copy. I, on the other hand, you know, kept promoting the whole idea of not so much as blindly copying, but really, really looking at what is going on at the original painting and then recreating it. 
you know and that's really like my stance and this is the reason why i do my studies it's not so much as you know i have a specific you know goal in mind you know sometimes i do sometimes i don't but for the most part i'm like well i really like the image let's see if i could try to recreate it and like look at the image and then try to recreate it without you know cheating essentially without tracing without color picking from from the original all of that stuff everything is eyeball you know and that's what i do for my studies is like training my eye and that's what i said in one of my videos it's like this is how i approach my studies is to really just train my eye just to eyeball everything and see how well i could recreate the original and so this is the reason why i'm really upset about this painting because even though i recreated it very well i mean in my opinion i'm not bragging or anything you know Part of me felt like, you know, it was a successful, you know, copy of sorts, you know, or a successful study of sorts because I was able to, you know, recreate it and eyeball everything without having, without having to trace it or color pick from the original source or whatnot, you know, so I think it's successful. But it also depresses me because I missed the sword, you know, I'm all about promoting, you know, looking with your eye, really, really looking your eye. Or really really looking with your eye I kept saying that over and over in my videos and here I am not practicing what I preach so it's kind of depressing you know I mean yeah so it is immensely depressing that I did not put the sword in there but you know I decided to keep my original work and just let it be again like i said i could have edited it back in there but at this point in time i might as well just display this huge huge mistake of mine so yeah if there is a takeaway lesson from this today kids is to make sure you really really look because i was not looking clearly i was not so yeah but yeah Okay, so now that the initial color blocking phase is pretty much over with, um, I'm about to begin the detailing process. Um, so to recap what we have seen so far, I basically took the old painting and turned it, turned on the Gaussian blur or put the filter Gaussian blur on it so that it's all faded out. And the reason why I do this, as I've mentioned before, is to start out with a colored canvas instead of a blank canvas. And then when I did that, I did an initial color blocking. And then I did an outline. And then I basically just started refining the color blocks some more. You know, so first I had huge swaths of color, huge blocks of it. And then after I laid down the outline, um, Oh, yeah, one thing I forgot is that after I did the outline, I checked proportions. If you look back at the video, 
you'll see me rearrange my windows so that I could compare them uh, together uh, by drawing an imaginary line uh, from one photo to another. So basically I'm measuring um, like the top of the head for example where that pointy part of the helmet is. I would try to trace it to see. Well, I would trace it with an imaginary line from the original to my to my painting to see if they all kind of line up. So that's what I did. I checked proportions. Um, eyeballing proportions like that though will still be off you know. So in the end, the proportions on my painting ended up becoming or ended up uh, running huge. Like my horse and my character is a lot bigger than the original one. So yeah, you know, I could never get it perfect, obviously, when you're eyeballing things, but it's still a good way to train your eyes, essentially. So yeah, after I did that outline and I checked proportions, then I went back and did a whole another session of blocking in some more colors and whatnot uh, really roughly you can see an example of it on the hind legs of the horse right now where you just see me swat uh, a few swats of color that have yet to all kind of blend in and make it look smooth and whatnot um so yeah that's what i did uh you can see it too in the fire fury background um those were all just kind of like loose details that i didn't refine and so after that, I started detailing uh, the helmet. Um, the character was the very first one I detailed. I just finished detailing him. Um, and it was it went by real quick. I remember when I was working on it, um, like looking at the source material and then recreating it on my own just went by real quick. And part of the reason why is because there's not a whole lot of information there to begin with i mean the character is mainly in shadow um so it was essentially easy to recreate because huge parts of him are in just one color essentially and um i wanted to highlight that as probably like one of the big reasons why this image is immensely successful in the first place um, Frank Frazetta has a huge tendencies for the chiaroscuro effect. I could never pronounce this word correctly. Chiaroscuro, chiaroscuro. Um, and basically chiaroscuro, uh, um, for the ones who's familiar with it and for the ones who are not, um, I guess I'll just quickly explain it. Chiaroscuro is basically a style of painting where, um, there's a huge contrast between light and dark. Um, a lot of the Renaissance paintings uh, use this to great effect and um, it really creates a harmony in the painting typically you know uh, because it's like a balance between light and dark uh, especially if used effectively and Frank Frazetta obviously did such a great job with, car with the chiaroscuro effect on this one um, just as i mentioned before like the character half the characters in shadow you know and only the helmet and his shoulder pad is pretty much in highlight and his uh weapon his axe is um highlighted detail like you could tell the detail but everything else about him is um in shadow so it kind of gives off this whole like um a menacing effect you know where this guy is something you definitely don't want to have to deal with, you know. But um, yeah, this is an amazingly well-painted image. Um, again, another one of the reasons why I wanted to study it. Um, and I just remembered I did this. I, I have no idea what I was thinking when I'm doing this. I'm like doing this whole filter effect and I don't really know what my whole intention to this was i think i just wanted to have fun for a little bit and see what all the effects i could do with the gimmick filter um i think it was like the first time i installed it and i was like oh let me play around with it or something but yeah i don't know what that was but going back to the kara school effect and Frank Rosetta and why i love uh this painting this painting is going to be very very hard to recreate in a photo because in a typical real world setting, 
you can put the character in shadow like the way he is right now um, you could do like a studio effect where the, the character is in shadow and only parts of him is in light but if you set that light up for the character then what will end up happening is that the horse will all be in shadow and so that's the reason why there's kind of like this unique balance that happens in this painting because the character is in shadow but the horse is fairly well lit you know and they're all realistically rendered too you know like you, you could separate the two parts of this painting like the horse and the character and you know you could set up studio light to light the horse like the way it is and then you could set up studio lights to light the character the way it is in the painting but then you can't really put them together you know or i mean there's probably a way that you can but it's going to be very very difficult lighting wise you know and but frank frazetta totally you know pulled it off instead of the painting looking unbalanced he just did this very unique thing where it's immensely balanced so so yeah uh an amazingly well balanced illustration painting i would have to say um and again like i mentioned this would be very very hard to recreate in real life lighting wise you know it just it's just going to be difficult so yeah
So at this point in time, I pretty much have the character and the horse's face and neck area all pretty much detailed out and done. Um, again, I was like looking at my reference, you know, trying to figure out where the highlights are and figuring out where the edges are and just kind of just slowly recreate it, you know. So I'm about to, well, right now I'm about to do the birch real quick. Um, so yeah, um, this is probably like one of those moments too where I could have totally caught on about the sword missing. Um, if I hadn't put that reference image in that specific area where the sword should have gone, I, I feel like I would have noticed it, you know. But somehow I didn't, so uh, yeah. But anyways, I um, now that I finished like the birds and detailing the birds, I'm about to detail the armor area. And again, this is I think this is uh, part of the reason why I, I love doing this study was because of the whole golden armor, golden shield, and silver armor chain that he has on his saddle. Um, this whole area in the illustration, the whole saddle, shield, and footrest, um, this was a fun thing for me to study because I don't do a whole lot of metals um, or I don't study a whole lot of metals. So studying uh, sh studying how to shade metals and how to properly paint metals. Um, this was a fun thing for me to do because I don't do it often enough. Um, so yeah, this was my favorite part of the illustration essentially is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so for the chain, the armor chain, really, you know, I was afraid that I had to recreate each and every single circle, but I really actually didn't have to. I kind of just went uh, and outlined some shadowed areas real quick. Um, as you can see, that's what I'm working on right now. And I just pretty much just went back and highlighted, uh, added the highlights uh, with white, you know, and kind of just slowly made it look like their chains um pretty much this is pretty much what you do with detailing um most beginning artists when they start out they they feel like they have to detail and draw each and every single small thing that you see but the truth of it is is that you actually really don't have to you know you um can just do a few outlines or do a few rings and what ends up happening is that the mind will end up feeling the rest of it, you know. Um, so really, all you really had to do is just like a few rings or detail like a few rings. And if you do it in such a way as to indicate like all the rest of them are rings, um, then you'll get the armor chain effect without even really having to draw each and every single detail. So, um, so yeah, this is something that most non-artists don't even really realize is that when artists detail they actually don't put in a whole lot of time drawing each and every single little thing um because really you could just get away with a few marks that could kind of indicate that the details are in there and a lot of this you know beginning artists will learn when they practice enough you know so when they keep practicing and they keep studying they'll get to a point where you know, doing details such as this will just come by real quick. I even remember when I was doing this study that I thought I was going to spend a lot of time on the chain. Like, I kind of had a feeling in how to approach it, and like, I kind of knew how I was going to do it. But since I've never really done it before, I was just thinking, oh man, this chain's going to take me too long, it to take me forever. But I was really, really surprised as to how fast that went. So, I mean, you can see on this time lapse right here. You know, I went by real quick and I'm working on the footrest right now. The other part that I absolutely love is, uh, I guess, the armor of the saddle uh, behind the shield, the one to the right. Um, that one has the gold effect or it looks like a gold plated armor. Um, well, same thing with the footrest too. Um, but really, it's more apparent on the right side of the shield, um, the whole saddle armor. Um, 
if you take a look at that area on the right which you can't really see right now um, it looks like gold and again as i've mentioned before i don't really do a whole lot of studies with painting metals and whatnot so again this was another fun thing for me to do i've never done gold i've never really painted gold you know so let me practice and this is one of the things that i practiced with this particular illustration and um for anyone curious as to how you paint gold you pretty much um how i did it with this painting anyways uh, i mean there's multiple different approaches to painting gold but the how i approach it in this particular illustration is that i used reddish shadows and then orange brown midtones and yellow highlights that's pretty much how i ended up doing the whole gold effect on mine and it's really tricky painting gold and copper is very very tricky because sometimes you could it would just end up looking like a metal that's painted yellow you know so you have to be very very careful in how you approach it and how you do it because pulling off the whole gold look is really really difficult so yeah uh, i'm glad that mine was you know successful enough that it looks gold to me anyways um so yeah and I'm working on the shield right now. I'm about to start in that area that I'm talking about. This is the area that I was talking about. So yeah, I started with the reddish shadows. I kind of noticed that in my reference there were, there were kind of reddish brownish um, shadowed area. And so I kind of blocked those colors in there. Uh, and then I went back or I went in with an outline. So I'll pretty much took just like a black pen in. Uh, or a black or the regular brush uh, and set it to black color or a dark color and kind of put in my details so and then as soon as I put in all these details I just went back and we painted in all the highlights um, what you see the highlights on the left are very much white it leans towards white yellow so you'll see me like put those in um, so yeah, this was a fun part of the illustration for me too. It was difficult because I wasn't used to it, you know, so I was kind of like hesitant approaching this because I, you know, I wasn't experienced with it enough yet. Um, but in the end, I pulled it off okay, you know, I pulled it off great, you know, might not necessarily be the best gold plated saddle out there you know but i think it does the job enough to indicate that so yeah so yeah right now i'm defining the shadows some more and at this point it still kind of looks wonky i'm like waiting to add the highlights because i know the highlights really pop this whole thing out so yeah right now it's kind of still looking wonky still kind of looks dull it almost looks like a piece of wood that has yellow paint on it and um yeah yellow and brownish paint but you can see that i'm slowly working the highlights in and those highlights is the one that's going to make it look convincing that it's metal so yeah and why am I going to do the highlights? I'm like waiting to do the highlight because it's so cool. Like I remember when I was painting this, I was just absolutely stunned by the simplicity of it. You know, it's like, again, like I said, I was afraid that it was going to take forever, but I was really surprised that it didn't. Okay. So instead of going with straight white, I did the yellow first. So that added a completely different dimension to the whole thing. I didn't realize that I added yellow first. Now I'm adding the white and so yeah now it's beginning to look like metal yep and there it is it's looking shiny it's looking really really shiny really dig that i really love that when that when i when i worked that so yeah that, i thought that was kind of cool but yeah I, I thought it was gonna take forever but then it turned out that it, wasn't, it didn't really take that long same thing with the chain mail uh or the chain armor chain that I was going to take forever, but it didn't.
perfect. So this image is pretty much close to being finished, um, close to being wrapped up. Um, the last thing that I pretty much did was the shield. I think I might have gone back over the hind legs again some more and kind of hammer it out. But for the most part, um, I just pretty much just work on the shield. So yeah, um, so that's it for this study. Okay, so before this video is going to be over, I want to point out real quick that I have been having some sort of, uh, I've been having some uh, technical issues. So if there's some auditory um, anomalies or whatnot, if there's like some scratchy noises, please do forgive me for that. Uh, I will try to fix it in the next episode so that we won't be experiencing any of this weird, random, odd uh auditory uh issues so yeah um and another thing another thing that i wanted to mention is that i have officially gone live yay i have i now have my own website it is edgarej.com e-d-g-a-r-e-j.com -E uh so yeah there will be plenty of uh tips and tutorials well me, me, mainly tips, you know, not so much as tutorials, but like tips uh, and whatnot. And a lot of my art opinions and art theories are going to be uh, mentioned on there too. So do check it out um, and whatnot. Yeah. So come visit, read the articles and learn a thing or two about art. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.